Hello my soccer universe! Believe it or not, LUS can win a football game! Yay! First time since the 27th of August and boy was this a lucky win! All the bad luck that they had uh, in the previous home, home games now came back, or previous three games even, came now back and yes, it's a win, solidifying a third spot. Let me adjust a little bit here, so, let me see a little bit more of the losers over there, because Rapid Vienna, losing at Reed, and the coach is gone. And it's so funny because at halftime the talk was, yeah, they are, Rapid is playing well. Well, there's nothing really wrong. Uh, they, they, they just haven't scored the goal. Yeah, then they lose. So there you go. Uh, it's still very much, uh, <laughs> as, as we'll see in Austria, it is Salzburg that may get challenged for Spurnsturm Graz. We'll know about that more next week. And then Lask is at the moment best of the rest, but also with a distance to the other teams. Uh, so very interesting, of course, the relegation battle, although points will be halved and will heat even up more, but it's rather, rather tight with a very hard, um, very hard to tell who is in trouble there. In Germany, we had a super weekend, uh, in the sense that we had a pretty big game in the relegation fight, uh, that Stuttgart decided for themselves, uh, while Schalke also look already in big trouble. However, the biggest thing is that before the match day, the top four teams all played each other. And who's left standing? Of course Dortmund are not in there because of course they messed this up. Uh, again, individual errors. Give only a Berlin a 2-0 uh, win. And then Bayern said to Freiburg, you know, you had a nice run, but we are better. We are much, much, much better. And they were much, much, much better. So only Berlin are very clear up top. But Bayern is behind them and it's a similar situation like it is in the Premier League. And then there were a few really entertaining games uh, in Leipzig and in Köln, which we will all talk about. But I want to start as usual in Austria and at the Black and White Gods. I was watching especially second half with my kids, taught them a few songs. Uh, we were a little bit too loud, also to be said, but you know, we had fun. That game, Lask took an early lead, um, which potentially was even offset, but you know, VAR decided not so because the shot came off the post and I think Ljubicic potentially was slightly offside. It, it was really dependent on the line drawn. Uh, made, made to, uh, this was kind of the duel of the top strikers in Austria, Ljubi Ljubicic for Lask and uh, Markus Pink for uh, Klagenfurt. Klagenfurt kept that game very much competitive uh, and it was those two that I just, I just mentioned had a few chances but the longer the game went on the more Klagenfurt had had a chance hitting the woodwork twice early on. There was one uh, pink hit the post and then a header by uh, Gekos that kind of was a bouncing header that went up and he again hit the crossbar. And you really thought, oh, this is a relatively lucky lead for Lask. You need to make it a little bit tighter and, you know, try to uh, to keep the game interesting. Uh, however, it was in the 61st minute when Arweiler came on at the same moment. Um, uh, Jules came on for Horvath and actually for Lask and uh, Horvath actually really had a... I actually liked the way he played. Um, but, you know, changing it up is probably was not probably a, a, a bad idea. But it was at that point that Pink had already hit the crossbar again and no, sorry, they had a good chance before that. And then uh, Atvetko is setting Arvala who makes it 1-1 in the 63rd. A few minutes later, a header by Pink hits the crossbar and I'm telling to my girls, those idiots, those idiots are gonna lose this game that they had actually a lead in. And my little daughter was really shocked that I called the last players idiots. And I said, yep, they are idiots uh, in, in, in a way. And then I asked him, what does Lask mean? Of course, it means Linz Athletic Sport Club, so uh, Athletic Sport Club of, of Linz. Um, but we have another saying, Last andere Siegen, Kamerad, which means let others win, comrades, in German. And I said, this just fits perfectly to what they're going to do. Little did I know that with me kind of cursing them, the game turned around. Uh, uh, it came when Jules just played a really nice pass and Ljubicic dances to two defenders who uh, duly fall over. The goalie come, come, comes out, he takes a shot and it's 2-1 for Lask. At this moment I taught my girls the song Schwarz-Weiße Götter, which means black and white gods. From idiots they became gods and then just a few films later Michael sends Nakamura and it's 3-1 and they were lucky. 
they did not necessarily deserve that win. However, all the games that they uh, actually had many chances for example, hitting the woodwork themselves and ending up losing, now this time around the turn turned around and in that sense it felt good. I still hope that this is a sign that you know the turnaround is made. Now comes the stretch of games where you play a lot of top teams and they have been performing better there. Or I say a little bit about the Reed's win over Rapid, which came through a moonshine penalty. Um, Rapid just can get, 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 get going. And now the unrest is that Coach Feldhofer, who was just appointed last winter, is being replaced by Sporting Director Barisic, who already coached them. And as far as I remember, it was a rather average uh, coaching appointment. So, yeah. I'm a little bit surprised. I would have hoped that Rapid have a little bit more patience with their coaching staff because you build the whole squad for, for them. Well, 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 what are they going to do? But it just shows there's, of course, the new president has to be elected. There's a lot of uh, dirty infighting and, and so on. Just things are not right in Vienna. That's all I want to say to that. Uh, Tirol was 3 0 up at halftime against Lust Lustner before Lustner um, pulled two back. But I honestly have to say, Lustner, after a bright start, are already training very much down and are also getting into the relegation battle where Altach got a pretty big win over Hartberg, which has beaten Lusk. And as we will see, Hartberg are now last in, in, in the table because they probably should have won in Altach more than they should have won at Lusk. Sturmgrad were 1-0 down at halftime, however, then they turned on 49-51st, 55th and make it a 3-1 lead and only later on Röcher pulls one back. So a pretty big win for Sturmgrad, Graz as well, um, showing the resilience. And as much as I would like to say the last got a second piece, the best team in Austria, I think the title belongs now to Sturm Graz. Uh, Garda unfortunately say that. And then in the late game on Sunday, Salzburg get a 3 1 win in Austria Vienna. Not really surprising that result. And if you haven't seen him, the Europa League Cup coverage, uh, Austria Vienna, a striker just before the game had a pretty, uh, Huskovic had a pretty bad uh, accident where he had to be in a coma, artificial coma for, 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 for a while, but he's, on, uh, he's getting better. But it adds to the you know, long list of injuries for Austria Vienna. Um, and, you know, young team, little financial trouble, and so on. And it gets Salzburg too much and three goals by Adam, although they had it 1-1 at the half, but Adam is 74th and 80th. Makes it then a proper win for Salzburg, which means that Salzburg, of course, stayed top of the tail, but Sturm Graz are only two points behind and then Lask. If you wouldn't have had that blip, they could be right up there with them. But again, I mean, they're now five points behind Sturm, but also uh, five points ahead of Austria Klagenfurt. So a third place finish seems to be very much within reach. However, for the remaining spots in the uh, upper playoff uh, position, it's relatively tight. And I wouldn't even say that Austria Lusten are really out, out, out of it, although if I look at the table, they're definitely more looking down. Rapid Vienna precariously sitting in seventh. Uh, Klangfurt having actually overall the advantage, I thought I probably would give it to Austria Vienna. Uh, there and on, on on the bottom, I really could not tell you. Among the bottom four, those seem to me, for me, the teams that are really in relegation trouble. I couldn't tell you who. I have an inkling Altach, but it could also, also be Lusner, but I wouldn't be surprised if it, it gets Rido Hartberg as well. Um, if we look now, expect the final regular season, I mean, says one, two, three, it's pretty clear. And then the, a tight tussle and the same thing going uh, on the bottom. And for the final uh, season standings, Rapid Vienna still should be in the top four just because of the quality of the, of, of, of the squad. I just cannot quite believe it. But you see, uh, even when you look at the green shadings for Rapid Vienna, there's a pretty prominent dot at the seventh spot because they might as well fall out. But if you're in the lower one, they should win that one, of course. Uh, in the midweek, we have a cup round where, of course, all the second league teams who had an away draw now, uh, got, uh, they applied for home field advantage, they got it granted. So we have, for instance, last playing at Flores of in Vienna, uh, which were the second place team in uh, Austria's second league last uh, year round. And blau Linz have to play at home to Wolfsburg, the big one, definitely. It's not Tirol against Rapid Vienna, which is the only Bundesliga duel I see, but it's um, GRK. Graz, uh, uh, the athletic club from Graz, uh, so um, against Sturm Graz, a derby that has not happened in a long, long, long time. 
it has been moved to the six o'clock spot because I think there might be trouble afterwards. Those two, it's, this is a proper city derby, one that was very, very heated. Um, Admira Vaca recently re relegated, maybe good to do something in Salzburg. And then of course, we have a Viennese star between Sportclub and Austria Vienna, which I think also sounds really, really interesting. I hope for a good gate for Sportclub. Because that's a team that's always in financial trouble and they need those games. And now that uh, Vienna is not there, that's probably their ticket out of hell. Uh, and I, I really hope, I mean, uh, as much as I usually just like the big Viennese club, the next two in Vienna and Sport Club, I would really love that they play at least in the second, if not in the top league, because those are such traditional teams that I would just love to have in there. But on the weekend, we have two pretty big games. First off, I mean, 1v2. Salzburg against Sturm Graz. I think if Sturm Graz can pull the, pull the win, then uh, this might uh, make it interesting. Definitely in the league on the other side, Salzburg pull, uh, winning that one. It will be confirmed that they are the top favorites, with which, which they are anyway. I think also Rapid against Klagenfurt is not an uninteresting match. And then, of course, last game is Austria Vienna uh, for sure. And on the bottom, yeah, we have Lucenau against Ried. That's already a big one. And Hartberg against Tirol. Going over to Germany. Hoffenheim getting a win at Schalke. The Frankfurt Leverkusen game was one that was relatively open with um, slight, slight advantage Frankfurt. But it was relatively an open game that turned more or less on penalty decisions in, in a way. I mean, there was a first, it was a clear first half penalty in stoppage time that um, Kolomuani actually missed. However, a uh, goalkeeper was off the line and Kamala then con 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 converts. You really thought this might do it, but Hinkapie uh, gets the equal in the fee, 56, but almost immediately Kolomuani gets Frankfurt ahead and then Lindstrom uh, with an individual effort makes it 3-1. Then a uh, yellow red for Hinkapie in the 71st uh, co causing a penalty. Kamada converts it. That was the game done. And then Alario, who actually played for Leverkusen last, last season, makes it 5-1. So big one for Frankfurt, who I think they have such a good squad. They really should challenge for at least... Uh, top four finish i think they're good enough for for, for, for that but uh they're also very much up up and now the champions league probably doesn't help stuttgart badly needed, needed a win and if you watch stuttgart games at, at the moment you see that the main uh stand is under serious construction that's already for the euros coming in germany but it doesn't look pretty uh silas with a penalty gives stuttgart the early lead or in the third third minute uh armada um, makes it two Zola can pull Pullman back when the second half. Stuttgart gets a clear with against Silas and Endo. Uh, very much. That, uh, I think it's the first win for Stuttgart this season. Uh, getting rid of coach Mat Mat Matarazzo having on, 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 on the new management was really, really important for, 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 for them because they are really uh, afraid that it might go down. And a club of the size of Stuttgart should actually be in the Bundesliga. By, 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 by the way, I heard that... Um, Hamburg, who are still in the second league, have like an average gate of 45,000 or, so, or something, like public, uh, which would be high in the Bundesliga as the highest uh, average gate of any second league team worldwide, which I think is pretty amazing. I think they would be number four or five within Germany and would beat out even many Italian, Spanish, uh, English teams. So uh, pretty amazing stuff there. Not amazing, Bremen a little bit stopped by Mainz, who scored two, Wolfsburg, Gladbach, uh, entertaining two to draw. But I want to talk about Leipzig Hertha because that was a crazy game. Should have ended in a draw, despite having Leipzig a 3 0 lead after half, which came through a Forsberg goal in the 25th, Diallo in the 30th, and Orban in the 45th. That last goal that was, that was stumbled across the line. However, 62nd, 64th, uh, Luka Baki with a penalty at Jovetic pulled it back. And Hertha were pressing. Yes, there was a huge chance for Leipzig to make it 4-2. But there was so many... And Kunku goal, that was uh, a call for offside. But there were so many Hertha chances. That game could have well ended 3-3. And while Hertha don't get many wins and are still down, they also are hard out. In, 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 in a way. Another 3-2 between Köln and Augsburg. Uh, Köln fully deserved that win. 
but Augsburg were very much efficient getting a goal through Niederlechner uh, a great uh, goal is then uh, disallowed for offside uh, they even pull it back to 2-2 when Kölver had just turned the game around through Tigges and Hussein Basic and really seemed on, on a roll but in the end Tigges gets the deserved win for Köln Union Berlin is a very curious team I really have to have, have to say to I mean um they don't have much possession. They are not very accurate in passing. And their coach was very ready to point that out that they are not a top team. That the only goal for them is to get the 40 points, which means that they are safe. That's their goal for the season, despite them being top and having 23 points already. He says, we are not a top team. We are not the best team to team in Germany. We are hard to play against. We fight hard. We work hard. We make it ugly for you. And we are effective up front. However, not a top team. And that's exactly what they did. Harbour are getting the both goals. The first one, a clear error by uh, the goalkeeper for Dortmund, who just mishandles the ball and Harbour can pull it in, in, in into the net. And then again, uh, a very lax defending by Dortmund allowed a second goal as well. Uh, with um, I make it 2-0. Two, two I saw a little bit of the second half, but honestly, there was not much coming from Dortmund. I have to, I have to say, they were pressing at times, but I always had had a feeling that uh, Union are going to see that out, and now they're really very clear up table, because Freiburg doesn't get anything. No, they get completely steamrolled by Bayern. And yes, it is curious, because they just went to Nantes and steamrolled them, and now they get the same treatment, and on a week with two games, they have an overall goal difference, 4-5. Yeah, we couldn't be have more different. I mean, tunnel at, at, at the half for Bayern, it was actually a very interesting line, line with Chupomoting up front, and seemingly that's suddenly a focal point. Gnarvi, Chupomoting score, uh, Lira Sané score, Sadio Mane scores, and then lay it on Sassavito, but the game was done by the 55th minute. It was uh, really, uh, and this is how Bayern, how deadly Bayern can be at points that when they get, get, get rolling, can get really ugly, really quickly. But as I said, it's only on Berlin, four points on top of the table. It's a little, I, I'm tempted to say it's a little bit like Arsenal, but only on Berlin and Arsenal are two very, very different teams. It is so amazing what this Union Berlin team is doing. And again, uh, if you have not seen any um, uh, games there, see the stadium, three sides with stands. It's uh, a very much, uh, very proud Eastern Germans, but very alternative culture stuff. It, it's a team that's actually really, really nice to have. And them sitting top of the table, uh, no one could, could believe that. I mean, this was a stadium that the fans had to build with them because the team didn't have money. Very well run club, as is Freie Freiburg now one point behind Bayern, but you know, it seems very much Bayern's uh, now to lose. Hoffenheim are now 9 to 4 and Dortmund all the way down in 8th. Frankfurt, Gladbach, Köln, I think are all underrated teams. Um, we have to see whether Leipzig can get on the roll. I think Bremer will be more towards the midfield, but on the bottom, Stuttgart first win, has eight points, now Hertha Leverkusen is in there, Leverkusen, big name, but it, I really look at Schalke and Bochum, those are the teams that are in the most trouble and uh, it really hurts because I think those are also two teams that I would like to, there are, let's put that, there are other teams in the Bundesliga that I would like to see being relegated before Schalke, especially and about to, 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 to a certain degree also Bochum. Um, uh, expected standings tell you Schalke Bochum Stuttgart is now uh, in the relegation spot but it is rather rather tight it really will depend who will be able to pick up the wins Augsburg also still in there and as I said Werder Bremen looking kind of safeish now up top I would so love if Union Berlin can play in the Champions League that, that would be amazing Leipzig at the moment is still in the championship spot, but I have my doubts, but of course they are still highly rated. Also in Germany we have a cup round. I have here a few selected games. I mean the one that sticks out up top is Leipzig against Hamburg, although I think Leipzig will probably boss that one. Augsburg against Bayern is Bavarian Derby, and do you remember Augsburg beat Bayern just before the international break? So revenge there, I think it will be a big one. Stuttgart against Arminia Bielefeld, that has been a duel in the Bundesliga uh, that was relatively tight. I think Bielefeld once secured uh, 
uh, them staying up there. Then we also have another Bundesliga duel with Hoffenheim against Schalke, which we just had. It's typically Bundesliga, but I would, which uh, had had a Schalke, but I would actually expect Hoffenheim to win that one easy too. But yeah, here are a few. We'll talk about those in our next weekend. I have to say, maybe not as great of a calendar. Mainz Köln is a sleeper match, I would say. Uh, Dortmund Stuttgart, there have been some stuff, but I think it's Gladbach Frankfurt. Also, Hoffenheim Bayern doesn't look that uninteresting overall, but it's Gladbach Frankfurt. I think that could be a really, really entertaining game overall. And now there's not the animosity about Adi Hütter in there. So, yeah. This was it from me from Germany and from Austria. Um, please let me know in the com comments below if there's anything you would like to add. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.